us turn our Bibles to Book of Titus, Titus chapter 2, Book of Titus chapter 2, Titus chapter 2, we're going to look at verses 1 through 7, Titus chapter 2, verses 1 through 7, Titus chapter 2, verses 1 through 7, the title of the message is, It's Time to Examine Your Behavior, It's Time to Examine Your Behavior, Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, verse 1, the Bible says, But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged man be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience, the aged woman likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young woman to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded in all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works, in doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity. Brother Mark, can you please pray for the message? God, thank you for letting us all be here today. Please help us to pay attention and get something out of the preaching today. Thank you for providing us a church and a pastor and Bible-believing truth. Uh, please help all those souls out there lost or saved to get right doctrine like we do, God. And please help us to witness and to preach the preach what we learn every every week to the lost souls out there. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. 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 It's time to examine your behavior. There's never been a better time for you and I to examine our behavior. Behavior is the way you conduct yourself. It's an action, an attitude, speech. It's your deed. It's how you carry on as a Christian. When we look at Titus chapter 2, you saw some of the examples, how you should behave as an aged man, aged woman, you know, young man, young woman. And those are some of the things that you've already heard. Those are some of the things that you've already been preached to. What I want to look at today is when you look at your behavior, is it characterized by God? Is it characterized by Word of God? Is it characterized by love for the saints? Because you and I live in this day and age, you know, apostate age, Laodicean age, everything's lukewarm. So your behavior isn't examined as closely like, say, even 20 years ago. You say a bad word. In the past, your teachers will get on you. You know, sometimes, a little past than that, you get some spankings, even at churches, churches or even at you know, schools out there. Yes. But nowadays, every word that comes out of young people are F word, mm-hmm. S word. And it's coming from Christian young men and women. That's right. I mean, I was shocked. I was at a basketball court, you know, it was a couple years ago. And I know this guy is a Christian. And when he was playing, as they were talking and they're asking, you know, people to pass the ball, and every other word is like F word. It's ingrained in them. And as a Christian, that, I guess, did not bother the guy. Like whether S word comes out, whether F word comes out, either, you know, even to the worst of the you know, cusses out there, you know, MF, you know, anything. It just comes out naturally. People don't examine their behaviors. I mean, even when you're sitting here right now, I mean, do you examine your behavior? Man, as a Bible believer who loves the truth, who loves King James Bible, who loves sound doctrine, who loves, you know, to worship in spirit and in truth, your behavior should exemplify it. And there's no excuse for you to fall asleep. Right? That's not a good behavior. I mean, because your behavior when you're doing something that you love, you know, God forbid, you know, you're going to a movie theater or something, right? Again, you know, 
That's one condition. I'm sure Brother Joe knows, you know, my brother knows, and all the brethren, right? You get kicked out, you know, if Dr. Ruckman finds out, right? Well, it exemplifies, it typifies, it symbolizes Hollywood. Everything bad about human being. I mean, everything, right? You know, sex, lies, you know, you name it, drugs, you know, everything. It exemplifies it. There's reason why there are certain rules put in place. But as a Christian, as a Bible-believing Christian, have you ever thought about that? Like your behavior when it comes to such a things as, you know, involving Hollywood. Right. Because Hollywood involves not just, you know, going to places. It's also where you're at home and where you watch, what you watch, what you hear. Sometimes you, you just watch, you know, turn on TV. And I'm sure many of you guys have Netflix or Amazon Prime or whatever. All these apps are out there. There's so many out there nowadays. And you have your favorites everywhere, right? I mean, if, can you imagine if, one of, if we all go to your home without you having any chance to prepare yourself, to clean yourself, erase things, you know, and then go and then we turn on your TV or radio, and then let's see what's your favorite, what you've been watching. Because, you know, like YouTube has a history of what you've been watching. Yes. So let's go to your YouTube. Let's see what kind of behavior, you know, you're showing. I mean, I wonder what is there, but I know what is there. So I don't even have to examine. Because many of you are unholy. Many of you, your behavior does not equate to Christ's standard. And many of you are just flesh. Right. I mean, you're full of fleshly lust. And that's something that you and I have to admit. Before you want to change your behavior, you have to examine your behavior. I mean, don't you want to, you know, become and show sound doctrine in your life as yeah. exemplified in Titus chapter 2? In order for you to do that, you have to start examining all your behaviors. One of the things that, you know, shows that you are really trying to be a godly man and woman is what you deal with saints, how you deal with saints. And as we have summer camp coming up, it, it will show, right, what kind of behavior you exemplify. Who are saints, right? Saints are those who are saved. So you're brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. So those are saints. It's not, you know, where other religion goes, you know, I pray to the saint, you know. I mean, we have... We have, we, have, we have Saint Nathan right there. I mean, are you going to pray to Saint Nathan right there? You know, Brother Joe just came in. He's a saint. You know, are you going to be like, okay, you know, let's make him a saint, you know, and then let's write a prayer for him or a prayer to him, and then you recite it every single time so that you get so-called blessing. I mean, no, you get more cursing out of that. How you deal with saints is very important. It's not about families. You know, you have your, you know, flesh and blood families. Okay? That's a different story. But you have saints who you're going to spend eternity together in heaven. Man, whether you like that person or not, you're going to see each other for all eternity. Right? I, mean, I tell this story because, you know, Dr. Rokman told this story. I mean, you have, you know, people at church where he's been to, people had, did not talk to each other for like 30 years. I mean... One person sitting on that pew and one person sitting on this side of the pew. And they don't talk to each other, all right? Because they're bitter, you know, they, they have something that's bothering them. Right. But they don't recognize that there are saints that you're going to spend time together forever. Yeah. And yeah. when you think about the saints in your lives, right, what is your attitude towards your saints? Think about it. What are your attitudes towards your saints? Now, Apostle Paul constantly said, you know, pray for me, pray for me, right? I mean, do you pray for your saints? I mean, do you pray for each other? I mean, it's not a question about, you know, only when I remember. It's something that should be done every single day. I mean, what is a good behavior? Good behavior is the, something that has a pattern that you do on a daily basis. That's what good behavior is. Bad behavior is what? 
something you do but that's bad on a daily basis, right? right? Something that you don't do. So if you don't read your Bible on a daily basis, then you have a bad behavior. Yeah. If you read your Bible on a daily basis, then you have a good behavior. If you pray for your saints on a daily basis, you have a good behavior. If you don't pray for saints on a daily basis, then you have a bad behavior. Then it just shows you and me that, you know, we have some bad behaviors that we have to take care of. Amen. I mean, you have yes. bad behavior. I mean, nobody's perfect. If you say you're perfect, you know, you're a fool. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Can you imagine, you know, some so-called saints at different churches out there, cults out there, and they're saying, I am perfect. Liar. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Those cult leaders. They said, I'm, I'm the prophet of God, and my behavior, everything is perfect. You know, there's a big, you know, stories always out there, right? You know, where there's a cult leader, and they, followers do everything that cult leader tells them to do. You marry that girl. You marry that guy, right? You sell all of your houses, and you're going to start farming at the acre that I bought, Right? That's why they are very good at business. They're conglomerate, I mean, what, what should I say? They're like a corporation. And then they always win big contracts. Do you know why? Because they have free labor. All of their followers work for the person free. And they could build, and that's why they become so huge. That's why they have all the resources. But that cult leader, his behavior, he thinks he's perfect. You know, God says, be sure your sin will find you out. Yeah, that's right. And that if not right now, but it's going to be, many of them are in jail right now for all the wrongs that they've done. Then you have to look at it. Man, spiritually speaking, you deserve to be in a jail. Yes, sir. I mean, you deserve to be in that spiritual jail. You know, that, you know kids could have a timeout. But you and I need a timeout. Yes. We need to go in that jail spiritual jail, and really examine our behavior. Right. Amen. Because if you do not stay by yourself somewhere and don't examine yourself, you're going to be the same as who you are right now. Yes. I mean, don't tell me that I'm going to change. You never change. That's right. I mean, I said that to myself. I'm going to change. I'm going to change on my own. You know, I don't need to set aside. I don't need to examine myself. I could just change. I could go with the flow. Don't you hear that all the time? I'm going to go with the flow. What flow are you flowing? I mean, I mean, what flow are you following anyways? Worldly flows, right? Yeah, that's right. You know, I mean, you and I could follow all the you know, trends out there, but that's not godly trend. That's why as much as it hurts you, as much as you know, it breaks your pride, you have to be in a spiritual jail for a little bit and start examining your behavior because... According to the word of God, you have broken a lot, a lot of laws. Yes. You have broken a lot of things that God said don't do it. Guilty. And it's, uh, it's not something that's, you know, you have choice, right? It's a must. It's like this, you know, don't steal, right? You get caught stealing, you go to jail, you know. You break laws. And if you get caught, you know, you're going to pay for it. But now, look at it. As a Christian who's supposed to be, who's supposed to have Christ living inside of you, your body is the temple of God, right? You are constantly defiling that body. You're constantly breaking the law that God has put in place in the word of God. Then you should be in jail. I mean, wouldn't you agree? If I constantly break the laws that's put in place, whatever the country it is, right, then I should be in jail. You know, if, sometimes you get away with it for a while. But you know how God works. You reap what you sow. God's going to eventually make you sow. God's going to make you pay for it. Then, before that huge punishment comes your way, it's better to take care of it. You know, that's why there's this thing called plea deal, right? You work with the prosecution. You know, you admit your faults. You have the sincere heart. 
to repent. And a lot of times, prosecution judges will see that in you. You don't, you don't want to be the majority of people who has a pompous attitude. You know, my situation, my circumstances made me do it. Yeah. Would you have done otherwise if you're in my shoes? Don't compare with me. Don't compare with others. Compare yourself with Jesus Christ. Would Christ have done it if he were in your shoes? No. I mean, if it's sin that you've committed, then you have to really think about it. Man, how have I behaved as a Christian? It's time for me to examine as a Christian how I behave. You know, certain things come along the way, right? I mean, have you been proud? Right? Have you honored Christ in all things? I mean, everything, everything, have you honored Christ? Are you motivated by glorifying God instead of your own envy? You know, a lot of times, your actions are based on envy. You do it to show off to other people. Right. I mean, that's pretty bad. Yeah. But that's who you are. That's who I am. It's, it's, a, it's an innate nature. You're born with it. That's why when you're a little baby, you start crying because you want attention from your mom or dad to give you food. And if you see other kids get something, you want it too. And as a parent, I mean, I think that's the hardest thing to do, to put them in a, in a right set of mind. When Jimmy over here has all the best toys in the world, but your kid don't have all the best toys in the world, and they play together, and your kid goes, how come Jimmy has everything, but I don't get it? You know, you don't love me if you don't get me that toy. I mean, it's all motivated, motivated by envy. Then as Christians, you definitely have to examine, I mean, how envious are you? I'm as simple as that. Because you do have envy, right? Yes. I mean, your actions are motivated by envy. Right. Many times, right? Oh, man, you know, that woman, you know, I want to be better than that woman. Oh, man, I want to be better than that man. You know what? I'm going to prove him wrong. I'm going to prove her wrong. I mean, why do you have, you know, you know so-called carnal mentality? Why do you want to prove anybody wrong? I mean, you just have to be faithful to God. Amen. I mean, just prove Christ right. Yes. I mean, why do you have that, you know, motivation? Okay, you know what? My goal in life is to prove that family wrong. But they looked down on me in the past, so I'm just going to prove them wrong. What good comes of it? You're full of bitterness. You're full of envy and you're full of wrong ambition. And then when you are trying to do that, then you start living the life where you want to keep up with the Joneses, right? You have so many temptations coming your way, yeah. and you accept it. Oh, yeah. You know, they look down on me because I was poor. I'm going to show them wrong. I'm going to prove them wrong. So you know what? I'm going to do whatever I can to become rich and then show up with a better car than them, better house than them, and better clothes and whatnot, you know. Do you think that will give you peace? Do you think that will give you satisfaction? No. No. You can't never gain godliness with sin, yeah. with sinful ways. You can. Yes. I mean, I, I know this happens. Like, okay, I've got to make my family rich. So I've got to, I've got to, earn some quick bucks, and the temptation comes your way, and devil sets traps along the way, right? I mean, you're browsing your phone and your internet, and suddenly some pop-up comes up, right? It's like an online casino, you know, some gambling site. And devil knows what's going on. You're like, okay, I need money. I need to be better than that family, you know? You never thought you'd ever do it, right? Ask everybody. People who fall into, say, you know, we're talking about gambling addiction, even Christians, many Christians fall into it as well. They're like, I never thought I'll never, ever, ever do it. But you've been doing it for the past 20 years, 30 years. You just can't get out of it. And how did all this start? Because of your envy your motivation, 
right? Then you have to stop it from happening. I mean, the Bible says abstain from all appearance of evil, right? Flee youthful lust. And that youthful lust is not just for youthful people. It's for everybody, right? You know, just because you're at a certain age, oh, okay, I don't have to worry about those youthful lust. You know, probably you're the one who thinks like that needs most, most, you know, warning, right? And there's no discrimination when it comes to sin, right? I mean, a 70-year-old can do what 18-year-old can do. Right. It's just not, maybe sometimes you can't run as fast, right? But you're still going to do it. You can move as fast, but you're still going to do it. I mean, because your body can do things that, you know, you are willing to do, have desire to do. Right. That's why your behavior, all these wrong things, you have to examine. You know, where do my real contentment come from? I mean, you and I live here to please God and have contentment in our lives. Who wants to live each day you know, unhappy? Who wants to live each day sad, downtrodden? Who wants to live each day as a Debbie Downer, wet blanket? Majority of people don't want to live like that. But sometimes you get conditioned to live like that. Why? Because you don't find real contentment. Because you don't have that real contentment. Because root of and the source of godliness is not anything other than Jesus Christ. Amen. Then you have to find out, is my behavior always based upon Lord Jesus Christ? I mean, it is a very rhetoric statement. It's something that cliche statement. You know, everybody hears it because of, you know, commercialization where they say, you know, what would Jesus do and all that stuff. But forget about it. But as a Christian... Is your behavior motivated by Jesus Christ? I mean, is your behavior motivated to please Jesus Christ? Is your behavior motivated to not disappoint Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? Because if you don't have that as your you know, motivation, then what's going to happen? Your contentment will be based on money. It will be based on love of money. Simple as that. Man, world turns because of money. Right. Then root of all evil, the love of money, will take a stranglehold in your life. Yes. Whether you make a lot or whether you make a little or whether you make in between, that thing will consume you. Every thought in your mind will be all about money. Money, 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 money. Even right now, for some of you, you're just thinking about money. Because you love money. And then you think that that money will resolve everything. You know, it will resolve the poverty in my family. It will resolve, you know, my current state, right? It will resolve everything. And then my future seems so much brighter if I don't have money problem. I mean, that's just human way of thinking. That's human behavior. But what will that bring? You know, it will bring lust, stupidity, you know, it's going to hurt your body, right? All the sins that you thought you never do, you start doing it. Yeah. And then you are going to justify it. You know, Christian, you know you are in a backslidden state when you start justifying your actions right. in front of God. Simple as that. You're like, okay, Lord, you know, I missed a lot of time spending with you because I was too busy. You understand, Lord, right? Lord, you know, I had to compromise today because, you know, to continue on living. You know, my bank account says, you know, only two digits, right? Lord, I had to do this because, you know, my wife and I, or my husband and I, you know, we're having some rough, rough patches right now. So, you know, I had to do it, Lord. You know, I needed some, you know, relief. I needed some peace in my heart, right? Lord, you know, I, I, I've been just depressed, so you know, I just needed to go to the medical route of drugs. You know, I had to do it, Lord. And certainly, you start compromising every little sin in your life, like every little thing. And you're like, I didn't kill nobody. I didn't rob a bank, right? You know, I didn't sleep with anybody. It's just me doing certain things, Lord, to make my family happy. And can you imagine? And this is always your excuse. I did it for the family. 
You know, I did it for my family. I did it for my children. Now, what kind of behavior is that? I mean, if Lord says to do this, you just do it. Right. right? But you're like, no, Lord, look at my children. They don't have clothes, which is a lie. They always have clothes. They don't have food, which is a lie. Lord always provides, you know, food yeah. raiment, Amen. right? So you're, you're already lying to the Lord. You just want something better, right? You go, Lord, you know. That's why Christians, good Christians, I mean, a lot of motivated Christians, a lot of excited Christians, a lot of zealous Christians, especially who's gone to the summer camp, blow up, you know, got conviction, maybe even got calling from God to be in the ministry, they fall away. Why? Why? Because they don't examine their behavior on a daily basis, and they let themselves go. And when certain things happen, that's where, you know, very danger lies. Everything's going well to your brain. You know, to you and I, our tiny brain, we think that everything's going well, right? You know, everything's going well. Then suddenly, there's obstacle. Suddenly, there's hindrance. Suddenly, something happens in your life that you did not expect. Whether it's accident, financial fall, you know, sickness, you name it. If you had examined your behavior on a daily basis, you could overcome because you find strength in the Lord Jesus Christ. But when those things come, if you're not examining your behavior on a daily basis and if you don't trust Christ, and if you don't put Christ as number one to please him for every action that you do, then you're going to take actions to please yourself. The question is obvious. Do you use your behavior out there to please yourself? I mean, simple as that. You do what you do. Why? To please yourself? Or is it to please Jesus Christ? I mean, simple as that, right? Do you sleep more than you need to because to please yourself? Or to please Jesus Christ? Because we have a lot of, lot of lazy Christians out there. Right. Yeah, right? True. I mean, it, six hours, nine hours, you name it. They said they've done so many studies, right? You know, they said those are the good hours to sleep for your body, right? If you take a nap, they say 20 minutes is good. Yeah. Either you take 20 minutes or 90 minutes, you know? I, mean, I don't know how true they are, but that's the you know, research they've done. Then obviously, you don't need five hours of nap, right? That's Every right. single day, right? You're, you're, you're not going to, like, tell Jesus Christ, like, Lord, I need five hours of nap after my work. You know, I come home at 5, and I sleep until 10. I eat, and I go back to sleep. You know, that's not a fruitful life, right? You know, so you do know that you can get very lazy as a Christian. Yes. Then you have to examine Am I sleeping for my own sake? Or, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I, there's always smart alecky people out there like, okay, you know, Pastor Jay said, I can never sleep. You know, I got to stay 24 <laughs> hours up and then, you know, <laughs> drink coffee and everything. And then, so, no, no, no. I mean, you live a balanced life. Yeah. If you need certain hours of sleep, just sleep that certain hours of sleep. Don't go beyond it, right? It's going to make you sluggish, lazy. Yeah. See, so simple, you know, example like that. Do you do things to please yourself, right? So you're watching something because everybody watches something in this day and age, right? You know, whether you're watching something through your phone, whether you're some watching through your TV, you know, computer, you're watching something. Yeah. Then what do you watch? Is that to pleasure yourself? Or is that to you know, pleasure Jesus Christ or you know, bring glory to Jesus Christ. What you watch, right, do you think Lord will be pleased? Think about it. Or is it to bring your own pleasure, right? I mean, a lot of times you'll just watch worldly TV, right. worldly movie, yes. right? Because admit it, you do it because, you know, you, you can't fulfill all that free time with God's stuff because you're not trained to, you're not ready, and your behavior is not there. So you do it. You know, don't be like, you know, I don't do it all the time, you know, but I do it only sometimes. But you're still doing it. I mean, that's like the worst answer, you know. 
Or do you do drugs? You know, only certain times, right? <laughs> oh, man. You're doing it. So as someone who's doing those certain sins in your life, you know, your behavior is not you know, right in the sight of God, then you have to examine yourself. Am I doing it to pleasure myself? You know, don't think about your family, okay? Just concentrate on yourself. Yeah. Because if you always concentrate on family or any other person, you could come up with thousands of excuses, right? right? You know, I do it for my children, Lord. That's why I have to miss church every Sunday now because they need, a, they need food on their table. I mean, that's just excuse. God will always provide your need. Amen. It's just that you, you feel like you know, this is the best way and this will fulfill your pleasure of achieving that goal. Then, as you look at your life, you know, all this behavior, you, know, you need to examine, am I doing it for my own pleasure, or am I doing it to glorify God? Am I doing it out of excuses of other people? I mean, you have to get rid of it. Always get rid of it. If I do certain things because of my wife and not for Lord Jesus Christ, then it's not going to end well. Right? Eventually, it's going to go down because your idea and my idea are never perfect. Your brain and my brain and our feelings and emotions will always change. Yes. I mean, can you imagine, like, your wife loves, say, egg benedict, but she has a stomach ache, so you make your egg benedict for her. You know you love it, right? But she can't even eat it. It's just your own idea. Come on, eat it. So she eats it, and then she gets more sick. That's who you are. You make other people around you more sick because of your behavior. Because, like, you think it's good. Because you're already, you know, already blinded, blinded by your own ways and sin. And then you start justifying things, and then you think that people around you are on the board with you. They're not. Your children will look at you like, why do I not see you on Sundays? I don't care about all this fancy clothes, fancy toys. I just want you to be with me, worshiping God together. I mean, simple as that. I mean, same thing with your spouses. I just want you and I to serve God together. Amen. You could give me a million dollars. How much happiness do you think million dollar gives you? Zero. Billion dollars. Oh. I mean, as they say, money can bring happiness. Boy. I mean, it can't. Right. But if you love money so much, you're going to strive to get that happiness, then as a Christian, you will definitely fall into temptation. And your behavior will show. And when you look at your behavior, think about it. So are you doing it for your own pleasure? Are you doing it for other people? And now, are you indifferent? Or you don't care about God's things? I mean, your behavior, a lot of times, don't think about God's things anymore, like in the past. right? Souls getting saved. You don't get excited anymore. King James Bible doesn't get you excited anymore. I mean, can, do you know how precious our Word of God is? Yes. I mean, if it weren't for God using Dr. Ruckman, yep. you and I might be looking at NASB yep. or NIV. Oh. I mean, I'm like, I'm sorry, you know. I have to skip a verse because there's no verse on this Bible, right? You know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> You, know, you guys have to bring your Greek manuscripts, you know, if you want to really understand, you know, Hebrew manuscript. No. It's precious. I mean, can you imagine thinking about, you know, Brother Dr. Ruckman and Brother Jack Chick? When they think about King James Bible, you think they're like, uh, it's just a book, you know, it's just God's word. No, it's precious to them. Amen. It's like everything that they've ever lived for. But you as a Christian, think about your behavior. Think about your attitude. Okay. Think about your conduct when it comes to the Word of God. I mean, is your mind occupied with the Word of God? I mean, your behavior should be occupied with the Word of God. Amen. I mean, and not just the Word of God. Not just the Bible itself. You have to be occupied with things in the Word of God. Amen. I mean, it's all good that you love your Bible, you carry it all the time, you sleep with it, you know, all the time. But if you never open it, 
and then understand and try to learn from the things inside of the Word of God, uh, no behavior is going to change. I mean, you do say you love the Bible. I believe it. But there's no substance. It's like you have a wife or you have a husband. You just know their face, but you don't know how, what they like. You don't know what they hate, right? You don't know when they're happy. You don't know when they're sad. You just have their face. That's it. Why not you just have a poster of your wife or husband and carry them around? I mean, that could be your behavior. But if you really want to be characterized, your behavior want to be characterized, you know, in serving God, it has to be occupied with the Word of God and things in the Word of God. Yes. And you, your behavior also should be occupied. You know, your mouth should be occupied with witnessing Amen. and telling the yes. truth. Amen. Tell the truth. Amen. Amen. That's, that's, a, that's a great, great character. Tell the truth no matter what. What do Bible believers tend to do often? They, they lie. They lie a lot. When it's not for your own benefit, it's not for your own family's benefit, you just lie. Right. I mean, lying is like eating your daily meal. You have to stand for truth. Your mouth should be occupied with witnessing, telling truth, no matter what. Yes. If it's going to hurt my spouse, it's going to hurt my children, but it is the truth, I'm going to say it. All good. If it's going to hurt me, if I'm going to you know, be punished for it, I've got to say it. Yes. Right? I mean, say, you know, if I've done something wrong, and then I'm put in a spot to talk about what I did wrong, I have to say it. Yeah. I mean, what good comes of it if you hide it? Yeah. I mean, it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Thus, your mouth should be occupied with witnessing and telling the truth. And what's the other way to characterize, characterize your behavior as a you know, godly Christian? Your activities, you know, your activities should be occupied with other Christians. Amen. Your activities should be occupied with other Christians, your saints, your, your brothers and sisters in Christ. You shouldn't be spending more time, you know, hanging out with unsaved, worldly Christians, yes. right? Amen. I mean, your best friend should be Jimmy who goes to, you know, so-and-so, I mean, non-Bible-believing church, right. right? Or Jane Doe who goes to different one. You should be occupied, you know, your activity should be occupied with other Christians, I mean, and that's how you guys grow. That's how you get encouraged. That's how you exhort each other. You shouldn't be calling you know, someone who doesn't come to church to discuss all your worldly problems, right? Because a lot of Christians do because you know, you're ashamed and you don't trust other Christians. Don't get me wrong. Christian is one of the worst people out there. Just know it for yourself. Don't have high expectation, right? I, mean, I hear this all the time. People who get saved come to church. They see everybody as, you know, quote, unquote, okay? You know, angels, right? Angels, right? You know, they think they're the nicest, kindest, most merciful, you know, graceful people out there. After one month, they hate the church people. I mean, because everybody's, you know, talking about you, gossiping, rumors, everybody. So-and-so don't like each other, you know, so-and-so, you know, blah, blah, blah. That's why when you don't have high expectation, you know, it's, you'll be less disappointed. Because you and I are flesh. We're just human beings. That's why when you treat each other as a sinner saved by grace, who needs God's grace and mercy every single day, then you treat each other with more admonishment. This brother and sister fails. That's normal. I fail. That's normal. We just got to get up. Amen. But you want to get up together. That's why you do activities together. Amen. That's why you're occupied together. That's why when we go street preaching, it's a great, great activity. You're doing it together. Yes. When you're witnessing summer camp on Sunday, you know, even fellowship, everything, when you do it because other Christians, your behavior will change. You'll start reexamining it. And then you start... You know, when at the beginning of the message, when I start talking about saints, you know, how you think about how you behave towards other saints, 
you're going to start doing it out of charity. You're going to start doing it out of love. Why? Because you are putting yourself in their shoes. You know, there's no such a greater thing than empathy yeah. when you are put yourself in other person's shoes and you understand. But as a Christian, you should. You have the same spirit. Amen. And you have the same Lord inside of you. Amen. Then when your activities are occupied with other Christians, then your behaviors will change. And lastly, you know, it's going back to it, your whole life is given to witnessing for Christ. Amen. Then your behavior will change. You gotta start to examine it. You're gonna be like, okay, you know, I live because of Christ. And what's number one goal when you live for Christ is to be a witness for him. And then you gotta be a witness to your own community you got to be a witness to all the neighbors. And you got to be a witness to, you know, far away people because of the Internet. You could connect and reach out to people. I mean, that young man reached out to people in Philippines, right? And he's not even born in Philippines. But he's reaching out to people of his own folks. Why? Because his life, his behavior is given to witnessing for Christ. Amen. Then at the end of the day, you know, sum up the whole message when you examine your behavior, is your behavior and life given to witnessing for Christ? If you could say yes, then everything else will be yes. If you say no, then everything else has to be examined. You got to get right with the Lord and start over. That's the best thing as a Christian. You and I don't have to stop. You and I don't have to stay in the gutter all the time. When you and I realize that, okay, my behavior has been worse than it should be, my behavior has been terrible, I want to get right. I want to get right with the Lord. I'm going to change my behavior. I'm going to examine my behavior, and I'm going to really be occupied with the Word of God, things of God. My mouth will be occupied with witnessing. You know, my activities will be occupied with my brethren, and I'm going to give my life for witnessing for Christ Amen. to all the lost and all the saved people as well. Then you could look at this question, you know, it's time to examine my behavior. I'm going to open that door, even though it's a time out jail place, spiritually speaking, it's good for me. I'm going to spend time there by myself with the Lord, get right with the Lord, and I'm going to come out. I'm going to be rehabbed, I'm going to come out yes. as a better man, better woman, you know, as a better Christian. Yes. Remember, the Lord's coming back soon. Amen. How do you want to be found? As a faithful servant yes. or an unfaithful servant? Faithful. Let's pray. Dear Father, many days we go by without really examining our behaviors, Lord God. As a Christian, say Bible-believing Christian, and we take things for granted, we're unthankful, and we do things not for your glory, but for our own pleasure and for our own family and others' pleasure. Lord God, help us to just repent and get right with you, Lord, and truly examine our behavior on a daily basis because we're just weak flesh, Lord. I pray that you'll be with everyone here and those who are listening, Lord, to have a closer relationship with you. If there's anything that hindering us from having a closer relationship with you, Lord God, help us to resolve it today. Not you know, wait until, you know, after the camp or years later, Lord, help us just resolve it today. And protect us from, you know, devil's attacks continuously, Lord. You know, bless the upcoming camp. And I pray that you'll bless the rest of the day as well, Lord. And above all, even so, come Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone.